worship you. We declare. We declare that from the north, south, east, and the west, there is no man. Six thousand years plus is enough time for any man to bear him. There is no man. There is no man. Brothers and sisters, you have come before the one who is mighty. You have come before the one who is able. No equal. No equal. His wisdom. No man can fathom. His ability. No man can comprehend. The great God. Hallelujah. I don't know why you came tonight. Some of us came with sicknesses in our bodies. Some of us came with all kinds of depression, demonic challenges. Some of us just came to press, koinonia, to press for more. Hallelujah. But it doesn't matter what, what brought you. I'd like you to know that this is part of the experience. Every time we worship him, we're not just singing choruses. Hallelujah. It's a response to a dimension of him. Hallelujah. I'd like you all to join me, sing just one song, and we'll look at the word of God. I want more of you I want more of you Jesus the more I know you make it a real cry you mustn't sing the song it's not composing to sing the song sing it out of revelation let that be the cry of every saint in this place. I want yes, Lord, I've healed the sick. I've casted out devils. I've raised the dead. But I know there is more. Teach me your way. Jesus, the more I know you. The more I know you. Lord touch me tonight I've not just come for a program please pray and say Lord touch me tonight teach me your ways show me something about your nature about your glory open up a window like my brother said cause my eyes to see something cause my eyes to see a reality in the kingdom help me see more of you that's our cry. Koinonia is the place where we cry. More of you.
praise him with a string instrument these are mysteries in the spirit Lord I express my love to you Once again, I want to welcome everybody. Hallelujah. Be seated in God's presence. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. equipping us by the ministry of the Holy Spirit no man is able to do this it's not a scientific act of wisdom you can't write textbooks on this when it comes to transformation and impartation there's no textbook you can only give people an idea of your experience it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to build men hallelujah Hebrews chapter 12 Lord, we truly love you. We truly love you. We truly respect you. We're a breed of men and women who mean business with you. Hebrews chapter 12. Hallelujah. I'd like us to read the first three words if you have King James almost all versions should be the same are you ready? one, two, read no, 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 verse two, sorry verse two, one, two, read people are all failed, come down I said the first three how many, what kind of, some versions are you're reading Amplified. Hebrews 12. Did I say Hebrews what? Verse 2. Just the first three words. Looking up to Jesus. Hallelujah. Is it, is it on your Bible? Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look up please. It's amazing how that many believers want to press into God. We want to be more like Him. And um, many believers want to grow. We want to step into dimensions. Hallelujah. But then, until you have a reference point. Are you following me now? Until you have a reference point, you will not know when you have become what you are pursuing. Hallelujah. Every time you are pursuing a thing, you must have a picture so that when you get there or when you get whatever you are pursuing you will know you have arrived
am i correct there are so many believers who want to know the lord but we've not taken out time to examine his life i've had very little teachings about the person jesus i've had different teachings about the anointing i've had different teachings about um growth spiritual growth and all of these things but how come we want to become like christ and we never get to talk about him the only time they talk about jesus in meetings is crusades and they just summarize him and say all right march to the front hallelujah if please appreciate the music director let me use this sir he's so smart hallelujah come on appreciate him hallelujah now if my goal is to become like him hallelujah the more i see him are you following me now i look at his life and then i begin to see a need to conform my life to look like him are you following me now but if you do not see him you don't have an idea of what you are supposed to be changed into hallelujah so several believers in their honest and sincere pursuit for god are being changed into different things and what we are becoming does not look like the jesus that we are trying to be so different teachings and revelations are molding us to become different things because the object our reference point we don't even know the kind of person we want to be like who is our standard the reference the jesus we preach about so many things yet the central focus the one who we are supposed to be like we don't have an idea and so every kind of teaching forms us to become like a prophet an apostle a member of so and so ministry are you following me now a member of so and so denomination because you become like whoever is your reference point hallelujah if all you have to see is your pastor you become like him you'll be very fortunate if your pastor is like christ then you become like Christ. But if your pastor is not like Christ, hallelujah. And it's important that in our attempt to press into the things of the spirit, see, the realm of the spirit is a very complicated realm. You can become anything. All you need to do is press. You want to be a herbalist, press. The method is the same. I mean, the requirements are almost the same. You want to learn how to still press. You want to know Satan more? Just press. So, as you press and say more of you, you suddenly enter a strange realm. And then you see many things that you can become like. And it's important to scan through. And several things will present pictures that represent success, greatness, achievement. You've got to drive them away and say, there's one I'm looking for give me a reference the word of god has painted a picture that is in my mind and you are nice but you don't look like the reference i can use you you can guide me but i do not see you being the reference you are a good leader but i do not see the reference in you and suddenly when the holy ghost helps you you say this is him when mary began to look for him they were looking around and when she found him she said rabboni she knew that he was the one are you following me now so the first question tonight is who are you pressing to become like because we have molded ourselves in different fashions that in our sincere quest to love god we found ourselves becoming many things hallelujah there is only one standard that's why i started by reading it says looking up to who Joshua Selman, Koinonia, yourself, your pastor. No, no, I, I believe in the place of spiritual guidance. Are you following me now? But I'm teaching you that for maximum transformation, this is the dynamics of real transformation. Let me tell you something, friends. The best of every man on this earth is still a man. Are you listening to me? The best of every man is still a man. looking up to jesus the author and the finisher of our faith our reference point our gauge the true standard hallelujah you look up to jesus to know what success should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus 
to know what progress should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what fulfillment should be jesus christ is perfect theology he's the expression of the full intention of the father for every man when he came and walked upon the earth the bible says the word became flesh god needed to give us a reference so that we would pattern our lives after that reference and so jesus walked upon the earth and he exhibited all the attributes we are trying to exhibit so if you want to be rich by the time you become a millionaire you look to jesus if what you have become doesn't look like who he is you followed another way and that means there's disaster are you following me now if you want to be anointed by the time you touch what you call anointing and it does not look like what you see in jesus christ then you know that you got something else it says looking it didn't say wishing or dreaming looking set your gaze onto jesus as you press it's a scene then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run so hebrews chapter 12 is talking about the race the pressing he said but hold on paul had told them run so many of them want to start running say hold on i need to let you know that as you are running and as you are pressing let your gaze be on jesus so that you will know you can appreciate your progress i follow me now you can know when when you are truly looking out to jesus you will know whether you are growing or not hallelujah paul said my little children in whom i travel until christ be formed in you and so it's our greatest desire to be with him koinonia and the holy spirit is here to guide us and help us when we stay in his presence then we become like him and then when we become like him we are empowered to reveal him in our world Emmanuel Emmanuel Your name is called Your name is called Emmanuel So it's our desire in this place that as God equips us for the glorious destiny he has for us as he equips us to represent him it's paramount that we understand that our goal is to be like Jesus the Bible makes us to understand that the apostles when they met Peter and he spoke at the Jerusalem council they looked at him and they said we know this guy this is a, an ordinary fisherman but he had been with Jesus so much that he was like him when they went to Antioch the people saw them and said remember there was a man who behaved like this he loved people just like these people are loving he healed the sick remember that man that was crucified don't you see him being reproduced there's a soup opera that many of you like about a man whose spirit entered another man what do we call it second chance his spirit entered another man and he started behaving like him is that correct so when the spirit that was in Jesus comes and begins to find expression in you men begin to see that the closest expression to the Jesus I can see is you how come 
your love life looks so close to what I see in the world how come your understanding is similar every time I read see if the people in your community read the Bible and they don't think about you you don't look like Jesus because you should be the closest expression of everything they find Colossians oh Lord make us more like you it's our desire make us more like you are you ready tonight the Lord is going to be walking on us very briefly hallelujah the Lord is going to be walking on every one of us God is building us radically pruning us and bringing us to points where we truly become competent ambassadors to represent his government our goal is not just to get ourselves spiritually enlightened nobody has received an award for reading genesis to revelation nobody has received an award for criming scriptures from genesis to revelation all those who have been loved by god are those who have dared to make the word of god seated in their spirits so much that they become like him church history is full of men and women who were the representation of jesus in their generation hallelujah Colossians chapter 3 and I read verse 1 if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God verse 2 set your affections such a powerful if you're ever looking for a scripture that talks I, I'm not done I'm just stopping because the scripture is really touching me if you're ever looking for a scripture that addresses true Christian character and the life the exemplary life of a believer you find it in Colossians chapter 3 and 4 so for many of you who have been crying and say God walk upon my character two chapters for you Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4 have revealed the highest manifestations of Christian conduct set your affections on things above not on things of the earth that's what we call carnality that's what we call materialism setting your affections on things on the earth and not on things that are above where christ is seated verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hidden with christ in god when christ who is our life shall appear then shall we also appear with him in glory verse 5 now we begin mortify therefore your members listen look up i hope you know paul was not speaking to unbelievers hallelujah he wasn't speaking to unbelievers he was speaking to men and women who were going to shake the cities he said mortify deaden let's read on your members which are upon the earth then he says fornication uncleanliness inordinate affection evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of god cometh upon the sons of disobedience in the which ye once walked when ye lived in them but now put off all of this are you are you there tonight god is going to be walking upon us as i as i read the list i'll not be doing too much of talking let the word of god speak some things will be flogging you from this scripture it will rise out of this bible and hit you some are already hitting me as it hits you yield to that hitting tonight is not the night where you pretend as though it's touching your neighbor because i will share and then we'll raise a cry are you listening to me we want to truly represent the kingdom in its fullness let me tell you the proof that you are truly christ-like is not when you heal the sick if you have to pray in tongues for your community to know you are a christian you are not a real christian that every time they see you you display at your default the attributes of the christ life there's nothing as beautiful as seeing the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit come upon a truly yielded life 
full of character an expression of the fullness of what christ is did you know that your lifestyle affects people even more than your what you do on stage hallelujah there are certain people that respect you today and especially for we ministers not because of the sermon you preached you truly represented jesus at a very default state somewhere that you do not even know there are many of you that are treasured and held in high esteem not because you've healed any sick body hallelujah the man we call um the great evangelist billy graham it wasn't recorded that he had many manifestations of the spirit in his meeting if he had any at all we don't have records that he of course there will be pockets of miracles here and there but he didn't seem to in quote as we will put moving power you know have everybody lie down and say okay you know this and that but till today there's no president in america that doesn't go to pay homage whether he's a freemason whether he's born again what did that man show the world that compelled the united states of america to put it it was is almost a law there are certain people that seem to command the attention of their territories because they are the truest representation of christ has nothing to do with denomination has nothing to do with whether you are orthodox or pentecostal living faith cooking celestial church whatever it is that's not the issue hallelujah so let's read on this is koinonia we are becoming more like him hmm. are you there verse 8 put off all of these are you ready to hear the this now all right anger anger oh put off these dear ambassadors of the most high those who want to represent him put off all of this yes you are anointed yes you can heal the sick yes you are prosperous you are a multi-millionaire but put off this anger wrath malice come on anointed people malice hallelujah i hope you like this teaching tonight blasphemy filthy communications ha, look up channel o and mtv and all kinds of media programs have cultured the language of many people including believers and so it's true that you are born again you are serving in church you are anointed i mean all you need to do is blow the and you see people just moving around but evil communication your communication has made people question the anointing upon your life and people say i cannot reconcile what i see on stage with what i see around i can't reconcile it and the bible says so that this thing will not corrupt your being an ambassador lay aside even filthy communication let's read on lie not to one another verse 9 ah! nigerians lie not to one another businessmen lie not to one another prospective politicians lie not to one another those who are seeking favor from different people lie not to one another hallelujah seeing that you have put off the old man the bible calls all of these the attributes of who the old man and we have so many new creation people i have been crucified with christ hallelujah but when you are shouting new creation this is part of it you must embrace the entirety of it you can't embrace prosperity and wealth and anointing and power and charisma and then you refuse to embrace this because it wasn't written in the old testament for many of you who have a serious problem with the old testament 
there's a nice scripture centered around the New Testament. Hallelujah. A woman called an around tree were trying to get her books so that we'll stock it in the library within the gates and the priestly bride. I like studying on people who have been to heaven. I love it. We all love it because after the Bible, they are the closest that can say things that I like. We have many noisemakers writing all kinds of books. Before they write the book, they have calculated how much the profit is. Both upper limit and lower limit. You, do, you really don't have a desire to bless the world. And so, we need... Did you notice that most, if not all, the people that go to heaven come back and write books free? Or audio? I've, I've noticed this. Have you noticed that this is a trend? When they come back to heaven... They really don't want, even want to collect one naira. I'm not saying you shouldn't let your ideas bless you. So somebody is writing books now. You say, ah, you have started with me. No, no, no. Write your book. We'll buy it. Hallelujah. But this woman was with Jesus Christ. I mean, literally. In supernatural encounter. We have a series that we'll be considering. Called Supernatural Encounters. And we'll be playing some videos of men and women just like you and me. Who have walked some parts and realms where we're watching something uh, today in our house on a man who is transported by the spirit you know Philip's airways many of you call it we have real men who are doing Philip's airways not not imitation by our traditional people isn't that interesting and the guy said the Lord told him that a time will come we will need it hallelujah a time will come when they refuse to give us visas. We say, all right, have a nice day. I need to be at the airport in the next five minutes. How about that? If you don't believe this, you can have a nice day, honestly. Because this is, we are training you to become this. So if you have a problem with this mindset, the Lord is helping us in Jesus' name. And this woman was with Jesus Christ throughout 2005. Can you imagine? Throughout 2005, she was with Jesus Christ every day. You know, when I hear stories like this, I feel ashamed of what I know that I call revelation. Because when they asked this woman, I had, the, I, I still have it. I believe my laptop. Her interview with Sidroth is supernatural. And you know what this woman said when they asked her, Sidroth was asking and said, "Why don't you love? Why did you ask him about power, miracles, the revival coming?" Guess what she said? She said, I'm not interested. Ah, Joshua, he stung me. Oh. Me that have been pressing. Oh God, reveal the seventh dimension of power. Here is a woman who has been with Jesus for one solid year. She has become so much like him that her priorities have radically changed. If your priorities do not change in the presence of God, you are not really changing. Hallelujah. And now let me quote this woman. She... She said when she was in heaven, she saw, she entered a room and she saw the saints of old and the angels. They were mapping out the strategy for the revival that is coming. Hallelujah. So she was invited. They invited several generals who pioneered the ancient revivals and were asking them what were some of the challenges? Why did some revivals get corrupted? I follow me now. And one of the issues that this woman raised was the issue of character. Many people corrupted these revivals. Hallelujah. And so God is communicating to the entire fivefold ministry that while you are opening people up, that's why we have miracle services. We have time for impartation. But as you receive the anointing on one side, when you are about to run and say, you see how much I'll make you in one month with this money, as you're running God will hold your leg and say come back you have not finished reading it not too fast many of us are saying God give me this power and see all these millionaires people are suffering investment give me power but just one I know somebody that I can go and pray for a senator immediately is healed I'll tell him as you are healed collect uh, my bank account number hallelujah corruption and the man who is praising God suddenly begins to question you how many of you have been to a meeting and after a nice and powerful sermon they just begin to do funny things on stage that just kills your spirit you were so blessed i mean these people represented jesus christ so much 
and later on you see somebody with manasseh will just come and whisper something i'll say it's okay i'll address that and then as the air I mean celebrating miracles suddenly funny things begin to happen so i go and manipulate Jamfa, and i say Jamfa, just look straight there's one rich man there and because he has the gift of the prophetic it will work are you hearing me oh yes it will work let me tell you if we hold every one of you here i can tell you everything about your lives as the holy spirit grants grace that's the dangerous thing about the anointing hallelujah all we need to do is stir up the atmosphere and begin to pass mics around ourselves and you will see the accurate delivery of the word of god but what happens as i'm prophesying it you you follow this way and wait for me see let me tell you don't laugh about this the judgment of god is falling strong upon the church and god will prune and sanitize everything until we become a perfect bride a true bride that can represent him hallelujah and so a man gives a very pretty lady like this a wonderful word of knowledge you see the anointing walking and suddenly the remaining unrenewed part of his makeup just looks at her and ah now this lady is already kneeling down because he gave her a powerful word your name is gladys no, this i know her so it's not a word of knowledge <laughs> hallelujah and i know you your father is and she says yes yes sir says ah you want to know more follow me you just leave and and then he says please tell me more about my life and then he says all right i'll give you time just get my number when are we truly going to represent christ in a manner that will compel the world to know that there is something about this christianity let me tell you if it's only miracles we used to change the world we are going to be in trouble because voodoo is warming up are you listening to me confucius you need to go to asia and then you'll be home you know all these manifestations we do and shout i tell you the truth they'll cross their legs and stare at you like this because when you go there to visit a man as you enter his room you see him hanging on the air have you had, have you gotten to that dimension i'm saying it will take more than the gifts of the spirit are you following me there's a place for that the world will see miracles hallelujah but i'm saying it takes more than that what if everybody in your environment is healed what else will you do how else will you represent christ we have so many men of god nice people but then later you go and you just bribe in the office it's on your table all kinds of evil activities happen and the bible is saying for you to be a true ambassador you must be there's no escaping there must be a thorough worship. Hallelujah. So that who you are on stage and before people is who you truly are in the secret. When you get to that point, you are truly, you are practically and experientially entered the dimension the Bible calls holiness. Hallelujah. Can I preach this please? And then we raise a cry and pray because it will not profit us completely if all we do is just worship him and give him all the praise and you know all of us because we are praying in the spirit and you know the wonderful thing about the things of god is that when you operate a particular law of the spirit you will get the results so as you pray in tongues and you are diligent studying the word what happens your spirit is being trained so you are anointed you come and stand and all you need to do is begin to pray in tongues and you see this dense presence of god but as that is happening what happens lack of character begins to arise that's why paul said i keep my body this body is stubborn you must keep it part of your ministry is to keep it hallelujah let's read on lie not to one another seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new one, man which is renewed in the knowledge the word there is not renewed the word there is being renewed hallelujah 
in knowledge after the image of him that created him verse 12 put on look up the bible first told us what we'll put off you see the difference between jesus christ and our false prophets they tell you the problem but they never tell you the solution say there's somebody what is the solution put off all of these things that do not give a true picture of who jesus christ is how many unbelievers have backslided because we have misrepresented christ in our social environment hallelujah i once took a boat with a pastor some years ago and we we're going somewhere for a crusade and i was chartering a car so i decided i told him come and let's ride together and while we we're riding we got somewhere and wanted to enter and um, they had blocked the place they needed us to turn and it would be a whole walk and when it was time to turn i mean the driver was about to turn and the security man said no the pastor just spoke through the mirror and conjured one lie ah i was i sat back in my mind i said god you know i love you i really love you when we finished he looked at me and then he smiled see the difference between an unbeliever and a believer is that when you trespass the principles of god the holy ghost you feel the check in you when you get to a point where you are comfortable with misrepresenting christ you need a retreat quick quick whatever it is that you're doing you need a radical retreat alone hallelujah praise the lord we must be thoroughly washed we want the power of the holy ghost we want the anointing many of us want to stand on the stage and have people come and hear you hear me brother if you're not thoroughly walked upon the anointing that comes on you can kill you you know we like anointing and you just pack it see that say manasseh i need all the grace upon your life not so my brother not in this revival that is coming there are some things that you don't get by impartation you walk it by your diligence and intimacy with the holy ghost hallelujah let's read up quickly because i really want us to pray and understand there will soon be a program in the church put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved are you ready now tender mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness patience or long suffering he said forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you do what if any man has a quarrel ladies even as christ forgave you do what above all these things put on what love which is the bond of perfectness let the peace of god rule your hearts to which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful verse 16 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord the last verse and whatever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the lord jesus christ giving thanks to god and the father by him there is need for us and let me tell you something this is what i love about the orthodox circle you see let me say something let's assume this is orthodox and this is pentecostal stroke charismatic are you following me now the orthodox circle have done a great job in mastering the place of true christian character and morality that's why some of us who came from the orthodox background before getting filled with the holy spirit the remnant of that training still remains in us I follow me now and so many orthodox circles have rejected the side of the anointing i follow me now at the ministry of the holy spirit and they argue about tongues argue about all of this and live under the law and do all kinds of things but one thing i can tell you is that in many orthodox circles when someone is sick the next 12 20 30 minutes you see people rushing to come and greet him you hardly find that in pentecostal circles we always like celebrating 
when you buy a new car we can come to your house but when somebody is dead ah you are not supposed to die who wants to identify that's why in many pentecostal circles when their members die they send them back to the mother church they say go and bury them but when it's time to get married or celebrate a new post what happens i am your pastor are you getting blessed ah tonight's message the lord help us hallelujah and so both the pentecostals and the orthodox circles they are not wrong both of them are incomplete the revelations of christ are complementary not supplementary are you following me supplementary means you can replace one for another the holiness movement was not a wrong movement the word of faith movement was not a, a wrong movement are you following me now the charismatic movement at Sousa Street was not wrong. But the trouble is, when we section out a movement and base our entire lives on it, we we'll find out that we are missing on other ingredients that are meant to give us complete preparation. So we have men and women who are very holy and contrite. And the world can attest to the fact that we love God. But then the sick come and they keep getting sick. People are poor. People are not living the lives they are supposed to live. And then we have on one side manifestations of the spirit. Wheelchairs and all kinds of things. But when you talk about disorderliness and lawlessness, you still find it there. Hallelujah. And you see all kinds of things. Disorderliness. There must be a sense of decorum and maturity a level of character and furnishment that the spirit of God brings in us hallelujah that's the reason why God is building us and equipping us so that we are not only anointed but we truly can represent him have you seen some people you always let me tell you the more you become like Christ the more you are well favored everyone wants to be around you hallelujah have you seen some people every time they come around you you don't know when you have removed something to sow into their lives or every time they come you seem to respect them you may be older than them oh, but there's a carriage of his presence you see the character of the spirit you do something they are supposed to swallow you up and when you come they tell you it's all right i can't pretend i'm not angry but it's all right and you're like what kind of person is this until your life shocks your community such that they can say what kind of person are you some years ago the holy spirit asked me to draw a graph and write the fruit of the spirit versus their manifestation in my life and i was working in power raw power when i wrote it i was i was disappointed to the core a lot of people say josh you're a nice person oh you are gentle you are this when i plotted that graph i received grace to i don't know if i taught the paper or not but it stung my ego because i said okay god so where is the ambassador hallelujah i choose to represent him in his entirety i choose to represent him that the same testimony that is given about me on stage should be the same testimony anywhere you know i i always share this and let me say it i was in a bus one time going to sabo hallelujah and in that bus there was an elderly woman then there was a the very little boy the conductor and he was shouting and just insulting everyone in the car you know you talk and you talk back and yell back and there was this elderly woman and i think she wanted them to reduce the price or something and this boy would not let this woman rest he was just shouting and murmuring and at a point i got agitated in my spirit i said can you imagine this boy this is this woman is old enough to be his grandmother and he's shouting and my old man wanted to just give this guy a dirty slap and suddenly the holy spirit put me in check and then when it was time for me to pay the bus fare he said ah uh, someone has paid when i turned back i saw one ENI member i said god thank you <laughs> you know how to cover cover for our weaknesses we'll explain later on how 
how many of you have corrupted the things God is doing in your life by certain attributes don't tell me it does not matter are you listening to me don't let anybody preach any gospel to you that true Christian character and conformity to the Christ like life does not matter it does oh yes it does when you are truly conformed to the life of Christ then you find out God can trust you God can bring more ladies for you guys so that you counsel them because he knows that there will not be need for an emergency meeting in heaven hallelujah God can bring money God can bring money or something and trust you and make you a millionaire and know that there will not be an emergency meeting in heaven trying to manage what you have become looking on to Jesus looking on to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith I call us tonight to a point where we begin to re-examine our character there are certain languages that should not be found among believers hallelujah and many of us use them carelessly and we are very happy about that immediately you finish using the words you say oh, Jerry, let's pray and someone is just looking at you and then you tell the person i think you need the baptism you say me if the baptism will make me like what i'm seeing i'm not interested hallelujah god is raising and training leaders you know why i'm saying this because god is going to be committing ministries into our hands god is going to be committing wealth to our hands there are many people that when God blesses today, little financial prosperity, everybody around you becomes a slave. They must lick your leg and then we claim we are acknowledging God. God is bringing us to a point where we truly let our lives become windows. So on one side, you heal the sick, cast out devils and manifest the workings of the gifts of the spirit and then on another side men see you full of the christ-like life that they come and visit you when they bump into your house without invitation you will not need to arrange certain things and say where are these videos jerry yes, stay back then you just bring up any him there is need for the manifestation of the christ-like and let me tell you something there are two groups of people in this place those who say why did i come this night for this program i will be coming for only miracle service where there's no much preaching or those who say lord i contend for transformation i contend for transformation i i contend for transformation that's why many of you god has delayed you from running he has told you what he wants you to do you wonder why you are not ready on your mark set set has been for years where will go come when you hear this message and conform to it hallelujah as a lady everybody looks at you and they are seeing you very nice and pretty doing your hair and the guy just looks at you and says these are the kind of church girls that look like indisciplined ladies so the guy sags his jeans misrepresenting his maker and bouncing and coming and then begins to smoke in front of you and speak nonsense and says oh queen now, really hallelujah he comes to you thinking you are so cheap and he can go away with you then when he comes you get two chairs and sit him down and begin to expound scriptures more perfectly by the end of that exposition you, you either say two things i repent or all right i'll see you later you say what of my number i said no thank you the true testimony of, about your life is not supposed to be heard among believers but unbelievers only unbelievers have the right to attest to the fact that you are living a christ-like life or not and as god gave me this message to prepare i felt like dying because I say, God, why do you give me messages that will flog me first on stage? As I'm preaching right now, I know the areas God is saying, when you finish, let's go and do our own. Finish your delivery. 
how many of us have seen a need to cry unto God and say Lord I need to conform I've been looking up to many things and I've been gauging my progress based on aberrations and things that are not Christ but we must come to a point where we align hallelujah looking up to Jesus the Bible says put off malice bitterness don't say I was born like that all of us are like that in our family you step on my show I match you and give you a piece of my mind and go back to sleep that's how I am I'm that kind of person then you must change because the Bible says therefore if any man is in Christ he's a new creation but you must press that's why we worship him as you worship him you find out that the miracles you need in your life are not just bodily you need certain radical levels of transformation let me tell you something the more you are conforming to Christ the more they want to make you a leader everywhere in your department in your faculty there are many of you who just see someone who will come and say sorry is there something I can do for you I want to help you wash your clothes you wonder why they are seeing something in you let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your river flow Let the truth of your kingdom point God will give you his presence as a gift and you will be a living carrier of his divine presence every time you step into a place there is something about your life demons will attest to the fact that you are a true ambassador unbelievers even if they don't get born again whenever you step into a place you dilute that atmosphere and they change their confessions to accommodate your presence in that environment that when they are trying to bribe the moment you step in if it's for three hours you make every unbeliever uncomfortable in that place until you step out at that point men can truly see Jesus in your life and it won't be too long one day they'll say what is it about your life I know it's not about your words I I see that you represent love how come you love so much I thought you just used to fake it on stage but now I truly see that the love is in you how come you give so much I thought you're just trying to look for a name but I found out that is truly your nature how come you're so patient in a wicked world of impatience how come you're so tolerant these are the qualities that will make you anything in this life they have an attracting power they will compel anything to you a combination who will not want to be with a man who or a woman who loves who is patient who is tolerant we're discussing one day with Ejimi and he said something he said when competence meets humility is fearful when a man who is competent and then he decides to be humble is very painful it will inconvenience everybody and it will set a compulsory standard because when you see people who are better than you and you see them walking in humility are you seeing why ministers are supposed to really be an example 
because when people look at your life they cannot deny the grace and the workings of the spirit then they see the humility of the spirit they see the love of the spirit they are compelled to follow you as you follow christ paul said follow me even as i follow christ hallelujah and tonight we are going to cry tonight is that night when we are going to forgive all the people we have been holding for ages hello father mother sister brother till i die no you you will not die but today you will let go are you following me now today is that day when you will cry and say lord this bitterness ends i can't be looking at my brother i'm anointed tonight is the night we are going to raise a cry and let me tell you something make this a real cry that's why we came tonight this is part of koinonia tonight we are going to be reaching certain conclusions and say lord forever my life will represent love forever my life when we have this we will stop having broken homes are you listening to me we will stop having all kinds of challenges in our companies in our ministries we need to be more like christ in the anointing and the manifestation of the spirit the same spirit that produces the outworkings of grace and power is the same spirit that brings in character rise up on your feet bless god for tonight's teaching the making of leaders the making of champions may be a hard message but it's part of the requirements to be a true ambassador go ahead and raise a cry Shata kaparia de kalabakoso tai le kaparia da basanda da baria da rash for every one of us born of a woman in this place there is need to cry tonight beginning from myself there's something an attribute of the flesh that we need to lay aside and pick up something tonight is not the night to talk about anointing we are not talking about power we are all great men and women in this place unforgiveness bitterness all of these things that cripple the manifestations go ahead raise a cry raise a cry from your spirit we want to present a perfect portrait a perfect representation we want to be true ambassadors living epistles testimonies we want to let the world see jesus in reality lost corruption all kinds of the workings of the flesh go ahead and raise a cry don't let the devil deceive you and say this does not concern you every ambassador in this place should raise a cry for the sake of his majesty for the sake of his glory make sure you're praying you're talking to the lord and say lord i have healed the sick many have seen manifestations of the spirit i can't deny that i'm anointed i can't deny that i'm gifted i can't deny it but something about my life keeps betraying your kingdom and tonight is that night i lay it aside draw me close to you that's a song of surrender tonight never let me go say lord i lay it i lay it all down i lay it all down again to hear you say that i'm your friend let this be a true confession from your spirit you are my desire No one and nothing will do Tell him Lord nothing can take your place 
place. Dethrone every idol. Dethrone every habit. Dethrone every addiction. The power of God is present to set men free. Tell him, Lord, help me. That's a cry tonight. Help me. Help me find a way. Bring me back. We're coming back. We're coming back. We're coming back. No matter how far you have gone. do not represent the kingdom out of your life are you listening to me instrumentalists play your best clash the symbol as we pray prayer point number one we are going to pray and say Lord I lay aside lost enough is enough I lay aside lost once and for all by the Spirit of God as you make that confession the ability of the Spirit is there to help you I lay aside bitterness pride and arrogance I lay it aside. Don't let the devil condemn you. God will never condemn you. God will not condemn you. He's building you. Anytime you sense condemnation, cast it. It comes from Satan. Go ahead and cry. To be a real ambassador. Raise a cry. All over this building. Raise a cry in your spirit. The Lord, I repent. Bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, rage, rebellious heart, stubborn heart, want the things of God. Oh, we raise a cry. 
answer for the world today. I believe in this no Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. your neighbor we are going to be praying Galatians chapter 5 we need our world to see Jesus in his entirety in our lives we are not indisciplined people we love the Lord and we respect his government we have a king and we have a kingdom we have values and we live by those values Galatians chapter 5. I'll read it once. As soon as I read it, worshippers go ahead and just worship and we'll pray it. But the fruit of the Spirit, in other words, the fruit that the Holy Ghost 
manifests through a recreated human spirit is love joy peace long suffering not short suffering patience it's called gentleness gentleness don't tell me I was born that way gentleness goodness faith meekness self control self control anything cannot be yes any road is not the road self control are you ready to pray and say Lord as I step into new dimensions I want to see a rich manifestation of all of these things. Go ahead and begin to pray. My life manifests the love. Go ahead and pray. My life is a manifestation of the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. The peace of God reigns in my heart. The peace of God reigns in my heart. The peace of peace lives in me. The peace of peace lives in me. Oh, I'm patient. I'm patient. I cast out every impatience. I am patient. Make sure you are praying. Take this seriously. Don't look at your neighbor. Pray. I am gentle in the name of Jesus. I am gentle. The workings of gentleness is manifesting through my life. The goodness of the Lord is being manifested through my life. The goodness of God. Make sure you are praying. There's grace for you as you pray. I am faithful. I speak it into my life. I am faithful in the name of Jesus. I am meek, humble in mind, humble in heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every seed of pride in me, I cast it away. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We attempt to round up i'd like to invite as many of you who want to give your heart to the lord you've not made a decision for the lord it doesn't matter what you have done the lord loves you hallelujah and for those of you who have at one time been really close to the lord and you love his ways but for some reason pressures distractions or for whatever reason you found yourself derailing obviously delaying please find your way to the front quickly quickly find your way to the front the lord is showing you mercy tonight don't think about it run leave your seat if you are still thinking about it go back to your seat for the way of the lord is the way of we i choose the way
there is always a new beginning the law condemns religious people condemn and they make you feel bad they make you feel sorrowful they make it look like God is not love but I want to tell you tonight that God is love everyone who will come to him he will in no wise cast away we are a great family let no devil make you think there is no way today marks a new beginning I don't care what you have done no one condemns you the justifier of men is in the house tonight and with every sense of love with every sense of joy and welcome in our hearts we welcome you to a new beginning it doesn't matter how Satan has taken advantage of your life there is love the bond of perfectness hallelujah I know some of you are standing here to make your decision for the Lord for the first time others some of you are born again you love God you're just finding the struggles derailing from his path I'd like you to pray after me and say father I come before you in the name of Jesus I realize that you alone can help me Lord I declare that I receive your help tonight I receive your help bring my life back again give me a new beginning I'm willing to start again I'm willing to be serious with you every condemnation and every guilt as a result of my past is hereby washed in the blood and I declare that I'm not the same man who came I'm a new person with a new start a new beginning in the name of Jesus father I pray for these ones our brothers and sisters thank you because you have drawn them we love them thank you because they have not just come on their own they responded to your call Lord I pray that as many of them who have had challenges and bitter pasts let tonight be a fresh beginning therefore I prophesy to you remember not the, the former things nor consider the things of old Isaiah 43 from verse 18 behold the Lord does a new thing tonight behold the Lord does a new thing he will make ways in the wilderness for you streams in the desert a new beginning for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah now I like you to just um, you'll just take a walk the ushers will have a word with you to just have your details and a committee during the week will just meet with you and just follow you up hallelujah and we'll just talk with you and I truly believe that this decision you have made for the Lord will be the beginning of a great life everything you truly desire can be found in him hallelujah we appreciate you and we love you God bless you before you go I like a few of the ministers to come They'll be giving you a hug and imparting the love of God, letting you know that we love you. As soon as they give you a wonderful hug, you can follow the ushers. Just a few, three or four of you. Just come hug them and let them know you love them. Go ahead. Give them a wonderful fellowship. Love. We love you in the name of Jesus. We receive you. The love of Christ is at work. Please, as soon, don't go back to your seat. Just follow the ushers this way. Appreciate them as they go. Motivate them. Let them know we love them. Go ahead. A warm hug and impartation of love. Go ahead and appreciate them until every one of them leaves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few quick announcements and we'll be out of here. Hallelujah. Please sit down for a while. God bless you. Just a few announcements and we'll be out of here. Um, to let you know that there are buses available 
now please understand that the buses are limited are you following me the buses are limited it may not be able to accommodate everyone so as many of you who have the means to go back to your various destinations please you can go so that those who need to um come into the bus and utilize the opportunity to get to school or wherever they are going very very important and then um to remind us how many of you know that we are on with the bus project hallelujah we are on with the bus project for your seed your love gift we don't compel people we can encourage people the bible says let every man gives as he has purposed in his heart and we have agreed as a house to make commitments from five thousand naira and above as many of you have it up who had it or brought it here you can give the treasurer tosin wave your hands or any of the ministers or the heads of departments please and please let god bless you commit yourself even as you sow. hallelujah so diligently even if you've given give again you'll be glad to know that your seed is being utilized hallelujah and then i want to apologize for many of you who paid for the koinonia shirts and have not received them we really really apologize hallelujah the shirts are still on you can pay with the treasurer Ejimi is around and he'll be hallelujah lift your hands and say father thank you for tonight i know you will do something in my life that has never been done before Oh, bless him because his presence is in this place. Manda grasa balaka bosh. Zipa kumbria sta balada bakura te kresti bana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to make you wise. And to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Lift your hands and say, Lord, let your word come tonight to set me free, to deliver me, to prosper me, to enlighten me, that I will rule in the day and rule in the night, that I'll be a true ambassador of the kingdom. hallelujah hallelujah it's great to have everyone around this night good evening just walk up to 10 people give them a big hug tell them it's good to have you around Hallelujah. Why are you in a hurry to sit down tonight? Hallelujah. Don't worry, I understand it's the revelation that you are seated with Christ. Hallelujah. Can we worship God for just two minutes? Nina Kawo Yabo Serkin Salama Kene Serkin Salama Serkin Salama Kene Serkin Salama Serkin Salama Nina Kawo Yabo Kawo Yabo Sarkin Salama Kene Sarkin Salama Sarkin Salama Kene Sarkin Salama Sarkin Salama Shilala Namo Sitaria Namo Namo Deva Maya Namo Sarama Just a voice 
voices. Nakawo ya bo. Seki salama. Nakawo ya bo. Seki salama. Kani seki salama. Seki salama. Kani seki salama. Tonight, Lord, we declare that you are the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace. You have come to bless us tonight. Let your word bless us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore. Tonight I'll be teaching on something that I believe will change your life. Hallelujah. I know that every message that comes here is very powerful. But tonight I want to share with you something very personal and I believe it will bless you. Hallelujah. I, when God told me about this message, I didn't know what to call it. And then I had a dream this morning and I saw the title, Commanding Results. I didn't write it, I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight, if you will believe. Hmm. Make champions out of this message, my father. You see, many of you, when you hear the word like this, you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No, no. To the extent that I lacked what message would encapsulate, what title. And I said, Lord, you have to help me. And while I slept, the night i just saw it call it commanding results hallelujah what makes certain people to move in levels of results levels of power the manifestations of the word of god what makes certain ministries prosper and increase what makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth? Hallelujah. What makes others very blessed and prosperous? What makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne? Commanding results. Never forget this message for the rest of your life. Please, final year students, open up your ears, your heart, your spirit, your life. And receive this message tonight. Oh, 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 oh. Lord your word is true I believe 
And Lord, we believe we have seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word. The ancient have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time. Tonight, Lord, as we explore this ancient book, I pray that the potency of your power will be made manifest in our lives. Lord, I pray that we will not disregard this revelation tonight. I pray that we will believe it, we will respect it, we will obey it, and Lord, we are sure that you will perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Say in the name of Jesus. The word of God is making me a sign and a wonder. Like the ancients of old, the generals of old, the mighty men of old, I am making history by the power of the word. I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus' name. Matthew 21. I start reading from verse 18. Matthew 21. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Say he was hungry. So the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger. Hallelujah. And when he saw a fig tree along the way, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Say after me, but leaves only and said to it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away the bible says jesus was walking and then he saw a tree because he was hungry hallelujah so every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree are you listening to me and the bible says that jesus saw a tree from afar it looked wonderful green and jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit hallelujah only leaves and no fruit and he was angry it didn't look like he loved that tree because he cursed the tree out of anger he said let no fruit come out of you again why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming and you make hungry people come to you only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit hallelujah okay thank you i am sure that jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree that tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green hallelujah and every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that, that tree would satisfy its hunger the bible says when jesus came close he thought the leaves were in the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves no fruit what kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size have i mean uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit and jesus caused it in anger hallelujah that tree reminds me of many lives and many believers. We look anointed. We talk anointed. We act anointed. Hallelujah. Reminds me of many ministries. Reminds me of many men of God. Many pastors and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Reminds me of all kinds of people. Many leaders. They look like they are green. They look attractive hallelujah and then you come near only to find out that there is no food that can satisfy the hunger of people 
you will be blessed tonight oh you will be blessed tonight that's a contrast because you see jesus never said he's glorified when you have leaves john 15 verse 8 he said hearing is the father glorified that ye bear much fruit this is what brings glory to the father not that you become green hallelujah not that you just become green and blossom but you bear fruit hallelujah because when the hungry come they are looking the bible says jesus was hungry if you were not hungry nothing will make him to look for a tree because he was passing and he was hungry and then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves and he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit say i will bear fruit much fruit in the name of jesus hallelujah and so why are certain lives like this you find out that there is no fruit whatsoever listen to me if you have been serving the lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of a fruit something is wrong the end of faith is a performance and a manifestation but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed he said being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work he is able to perform it to the end so the life of a christian eventually in your journey some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted psalms 1 blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law doth he meditate day and night how are we sure he meditates day and night because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water other trees receive their nourishment from the rain but this guy receives his own from under he is planted by the rivers as a result he yields his fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither but the bible tells us that we see someone mimicking that blessed man with only leaves and no fruit hallelujah the bible says he shall be compared to a tree that is planted how will men who are afar because they may not see the river that he's planted close to so how will they see he will yield his fruit in season yes we agree that okay it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of god and believe it and absorb it but eventually there should be a sign the bible says and elijah prayed and he told his servant go and check he went he said there is no sign and he prayed at the seventh time there was a sign there will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing whether you are commanding power and authority if it is the real tongues you have been praying for years something in your life there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress are you listening to me if the bible says the word of god is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom are you listening to me the bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the lord if you have been walking and living by the word truly a time must come when men can testify and say there is an evidence say after me evidence there must be an evidence noah told men that god told him that rain was coming true or false it took a long time but eventually the bible says that god vindicated him abraham was a man who trusted god and even when he was 75 years hallelujah a promise was made to him and he waited 25 years for that promise but eventually the end of faith is a performance if you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of god eventually 
there must be a performance every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever are you listening to me if one area of your life is receiving results it's a sign that the other area will come so god will encourage you if academically you are not doing well spiritually you are not doing well health wise you are not doing well suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the spirit is at work in you what does it tell you it means fruit is already being produced is that correct and it will motivate you to begin to trust his word in other areas but where every of your life is a dead a barren wilderness something is wrong are you listening to me there are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever they pray more than anybody else they fast more than anybody else hallelujah there are all kinds of devotionals circulating in town. But I want to ask you a question tonight. How long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree? When will that leaf begin to translate into food that the hungry can come and begin to eat? Because, you see, it is deceit. Jesus saw a tree and was attracted. And when he came to the tree, he just found leaves. And there was no fruit and he was angry and he cursed the tree he said may fruit never come out of you again hallelujah two secrets tonight number one you want to command results in your life number one you must have absolute faith in god absolute faith in god demonstrated by total obedience absolute faith don't just write faith in God absolute faith in God absolute faith in the word of God demonstrated by total obedience unwavering obedience absolute faith that you believe that God is faithful and that God is able the thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible God cannot be joking with you hallelujah absolute faith listen we have ended up complicating Christianity but do you know I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation most of them were not even educated people they took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by. Verse 12. John 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, who is speaking here? This is Jesus Christ. The works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works. Say greater works. And greater works shall he do. This is Jesus Christ talking here. Not an angel. If he sent a prophet, would have said, oh, the prophet didn't hear well. Are you listening to me? Jesus himself said this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes, and Smith Wigglesworth found this and said, Lord, are you serious about this? That an uneducated person like me, if I can believe, if I can believe, and God said, yes. Catherine Kuman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily, he that believes, not he that is born again, 
not he that is praying in tongues he that believes absolute trust the works that I do the works that I do he shall also do he say and greater works greater works many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation brother greater means greater you went to school greater means greater greater works that means if you are not seeing greater works what is the diagnosis you do not believe now let me tell you something when it comes to spiritual growth you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of god has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you when i was studying this scripture i said lord does that mean i don't believe in you god says simple to the degree to which you are seeing my works and i knew i had to accept it because brothers and sisters i have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody there are some people some things are possible for are you listening to me there are some people standing and praying oh lord bring a boat and then we see others get on that water and begin to move the fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing it kills the excuse that is god that is responsible are you listening to me he that believes in me the works i remember one of the first times i read this scripture i was studying pastor chris's message and kenyon on faith we we're going to prepare for crusade never had that experience we didn't know what to expect but we took this word and said lord this is true How many of you truly believe in God? How many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said. Those who it didn't even affect them. They just sat down and were looking. And he said God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying God is faithful and I move forward. There are listen, there are many of you who have been sitting, grumbling, shouting at God, saying, God, you are not true. Do you know you are one over how many people who are saying God is faithful? If you say God is not faithful, there are angels whose voices are louder than your own. They, it will overshadow your unbelief in an instant. One word holy. Are you listening to me do you believe god's word many of you have been reading your bible let me tell you something brothers and sisters there are many pastors there are many ministries who only open the bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people they don't believe it's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on sunday or on wednesday or on friday or whatever the meeting days are there are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God tonight I'm asking you do you believe the word of God do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you can you take it with childlike simplicity and say Lord I believe do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you there are many of you from the time you got to final year your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe god whatever i fear in my life the faith and the revelation of god's word has not entered yet because perfect love cast out fear so if you are afraid of the future let me assure you that the revelation of god's word that secures your future has not entered you yet are you listening to me absolute trust father Abraham and the generals of old these guys believed God and there was a performance 
and we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith you came to ABU and you believed God that you'll be a success then your first result 1.5 seven carryovers hey, hey God you said this boy you just said Lord I believe you you just said Lord I believe you you just said no matter what Lord your word is true and I know that this is not over hallelujah your uncle promised you that it's going to be blessing you suddenly your uncle said I've changed my mind he said how about uncle he said the only constant thing in life is change I have changed my mind and suddenly fear grips you I tell you friends fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life for when the word of God truly comes it drives out fear say I refuse to fear there are so many believers living in the world. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quotes. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. And then there is no performance in our lives. Those who command results. There are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing. You have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hallelujah. I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God. Because the Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. I challenge myself every time I say, Lord, why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday day before yet okay yesterday I think Sandra yes we're having Bible study and we were talking about the life the ministry of Jesus Christ and tears filled my eyes while I was talking because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw this guy was a man of faith nothing moved him he believed the father he believed the word he had such audacity he commanded results believe us what is wrong with us hallelujah i tell you the truth it's easy to feel like you are trying and i understand you are doing your best but it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us because when the word enters you, I tell you there is a performance. I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you. How much of God do you believe? Many of us have our spiritual life. Then we have our normal life. The one that works with wisdom. Let's be wise. Let's reason now. Don't be stupid. So you, we make bold claims. But when we step out there, there are all kinds of fears and we begin to patch the word of God and, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight. Do you have absolute faith in him? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith, but it may not be absolute. Because I know what absolute faith has done in my Bible. I've read my Bible very well. And men who had absolute faith, they rose beyond limitations and shook their generation. They had no internet. Are you listening to me? No people that produce posters. Look at the life of Jesus for instance. The Bible says in the book of Mark, that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room what what kind of result will a man command like this there are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves read the Bible the, see the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1 2 3 go and read it the Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum there multitudes heard about him and they came jesus went to the desert the same multitudes came jesus went by the seaside the
the same multitudes came jesus climbed the mountain the same multitudes came same result same power he casted out devils he healed the sick he preached the word he taught the word the performance look at me all of you look up if you were to suddenly see the vision of jesus christ the real jesus and he stood here and jesus suddenly made an announcement and said i am giving you 10 minutes the first 10 people who come to me whatever their needs are it will be met how many of you will check your with one before coming why are you not doing that to me simple i you you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place are you listening to me if you are hungry for god you have to get the truth and press to it i assure you listen to me brothers and sisters if jesus christ walked here right now before you finish the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say jesus you don't know how i've waited i already have my list i'm not about to write and you just drop it every time people heard about jesus they started laughing you know why they knew the result had come they just started laughing their own issue was to get to see him but your issue is not to see me your issue is that is to ascertain lord now that i've seen joshua help him let there be grace that is available this night to at least be able to meet some of my needs i tell you you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say i wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service two have been answered in my mind i say okay seven minus two is what help me seven minus two is what if you drop your prayer point directly to the person christ how many will be met tell me how many will be met this is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing i refuse to give excuses it simply means there is a light that i've not seen there is a depth of anointing i've not stepped into there is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that i've not gotten to yet that's why whether you say apostle josh bishop josh i won't be misled with all of those nonsense there is work to be done are you listening to me Those of you who are already confident, I'm laying hands on three people. I'm laying hands on five people. You stopped reading your Bible, that's why. Pick up your Bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride. And find out that there is work to be done. I tell you, if ministers knew this, the Bible would be the best tool that they will have. I refuse to give excuses. Are you listening to me? That my life will make such a mark. see we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional people say this guy is not real oh be careful this joshua selman guy is not real i'm warning you now tomorrow don't say it's any kind of thing because people are so complacent the average pastor there are three things that many men of god are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry one to have a crowd two to at least be able to say something from this bible it doesn't matter what it is number three and then let there be at least just one person who will fall they say you think i'm playing oh what a shame what a shame what a shame is that what you think will shake the world that's not uncommon enough we are talking about commanding authority over territories one miracle that let me tell you something in the days of the generals all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did right now when last the man must pay for advert if you see advert in the newspaper he paid for it to say okay my program is around please just check are you listening to me there are some people in Zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia. What are we boasting for? Hmm. Look 
at Elijah. He stands somewhere. The whole city, the whole city didn't hear him. He just said, there shall not be rain. The whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this. I say, one guy, Elijah, one man like this. And the gist started spreading. Elijah, who is he? He said, go and look for him now. And the king says, because the king's ego is, is spoiled, he's embarrassed. He says, go and catch that man. 50 people march and stand. And Elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain. And they interrupt his fellowship. This was a man like you. Are you listening to me? Old covenant for you, new creation. Old covenant. Elijah looks and says, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. right now we have different ways of speaking when you stand you say if i be standing in the authority and moving in the office the department and the office of the christ let it come fire doesn't come you're not getting it we're just teaching congregations english and vocabulary we're just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church well right now there's improvement everybody is falling everywhere Everybody is falling everywhere. Just watch TV. A man of signs and wonders. Before they say anything, people just fall. And that's all you have to show the world. Something is wrong. That's all you have to show the world. That a man just fell down. And then all, now prophecy itself is even him. Come, you are, you are Gladys. You are from the East. Your mother is sick. Your uncle traveled. You are an ABU student. And then the congregation claps. What, what? How? Look, real prophets. This is what they say. There is coming a problem in Zaria, but I stop it. Kabato kabaya. Manto pakaria dabakaya. That's a real mandate. That you stand and tell the people what Satan wants to do. And you stop it the creative power of the spoken word we just have a group of revelatory people even the native doctors can create they have helped to give you the one to reveal when are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results listen if two dead people how many if two dead people rise in koinonia i assure you if you come by 2 30 next friday you will stand outside critics look at the bible the bible says people came and filled where jesus was sitting mark chapter 2 and the bible says others were standing outside when jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought the bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front they said why are you forgiving his sins if they came late they would have been outside even them they rushed and came early for that meeting jesus had no nonsense he climbed the mountain brothers and sisters human beings like you stayed with a man for three days on the mountain The closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing go to the house of politicians you will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside you say why is he i'm waiting for his excellency that's the, it's called hunger the man has fruit where he got it is irrelevant he shall has fruit when believers come to church and after one hour they, uh, it's not true i tell you the truth is a sign of lack of true fire in the days of Amphie McPherson listen she had a program called stretcher only meaning if you are not sick you are not invited for that meeting what is our the name the kind of conferences we have right now business special for only the ones that are successful only you are not successful you are not a businessman walk outside the people are already successful pastor don't lie it's not your anointing that is making them successful these guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money and then you stand and say receive they have it already somebody is budgeting to buy a car of five million he has gotten 4.8 you are speaking speaking what 
takes two months salary to complete and buy his car. If I can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car, I'm a real prophet. Don't go and meet somebody that's already tried. If I meet Pastor Williams, I say, hey, Jim, tomorrow, of course. Common sense tells me he's... Ah. Am I challenging you? I know you don't like the message. Sorry you came. You must hear it this night. Koinonia. Where hunger is put in you again. See, a man called St. Patrick. Let me tell you something about St. Patrick. Hallelujah. St. Patrick was such a powerful man. He was a dangerous man. A snake beat in Ireland. A snake beat a, a woman's daughter. And she was crying. And St. Patrick was just meandering around the street. And he saw her. He said, Madam, why are you crying? She said, a snake beat her. He said, a snake beat you. Where? Where did the snake go to? Hallelujah. And they showed him the forest. He entered and searched for the snake. He held it. He said, you and your kind, I banish you from this land. Till today, there's no snake in Ireland. Hallelujah. The king got to hear gist about St. Patrick. He said, who is that man? They said, that guy is, we don't even know what to call him. And the king said, what sign will he show me? The king's son died six months. He said, go and call St. Patrick. Six months. They had put him in the grave. When St. Patrick came, true life story, St. Patrick looked. He signed his signature and wrote St. Patrick on the grave. He said, dig it out. That's how they carried that boy out. What are we boasting for? It was St. Patrick that began what you hear in Hubert Angel's channel. Christ in me. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. He says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church, a Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. And then they came and the wood was short. The guy just held the wood and started moving. That's how he drew it and completed it. I tell you the truth. Anthony McPherson will organize programs. The only people invited are those on stretchers. That's a real miracle service, not what we are doing. Charles and Francis Hunter. They walk close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raise 100 wheelchairs. Brothers and sisters, replace all the seats that are in this place. Just imagine in your mind there are wheelchairs and just move them here. Imagine if everybody here were crippled. This is the kind of service. There are many men of God, if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair, they just do as if they didn't see. I know my God will heal. They are laying hands and will just jump the person. And then you say, what manner of man is Jesus? He made the lame to walk. I wonder what the lame person is singing. And the shadows of Peter. Men lined up in the streets. Because they said, Peter is coming, Peter is coming. And I can imagine a woman, please come from bed. And Peter says, bless you, bless you. Suddenly you are hearing shouts. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. If we have half of that anointing, I will put this thing will be a basket, a bowl, and then you put it, you write my name Joshua, and then my picture will be here. You come and touch it, lick it, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, bath with the pour water on it, and go and bath. Madness. 
all those things because we do not understand women shook their generations right now there are men of god who are on tv but nobody knows them they air three times a week as they are saying now we thank you for this broadcast you cannot even remember who preached again the only thing you remember is gloss suit as if they printed it in a, in a printing press noise leaves with no fruit hallelujah am i challenging you because we need to rise friends this is an apostolic generation you cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing what we are doing now is joke i tell you it's not ministry yet archbishop benson idahosa he was driving okay they were driving him an armed robber stopped them back back stop the driver was afraid Idahosa just opened his mouth he told the person to open the door for him first he came out the armed robber lie down lie down he just looked at them he said one of three things must happen to you this night either you will be paralyzed you will be blind or you will die but one must happen this night Will land brothers ever spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of john g lake you know the way they admit people in shika that's how you come to his hospital you collect a form to prove that you had the healing anointing you go and bring seven people that you healed that's how he admits if you say you are sensing the call of god upon your life he said go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff can you imagine that was a yastic now everybody a man with a strong healing anointing i came all the way 50 kilometers to tell you your while they are talking the demons are saying now wow saying before when men were around there was fire you know these demons have been around since they knew the fire upon this man and they ask one another they say ah, when these guys died they didn't transfer anything and all of those men they were called brother this brother that now you call joshua selman apostle you know i fear that name because i just remember apostle paul apostle smith wigglesworth apostle john g lake Apostle St. Patrick, Apostle Josh, for where? For where? You won't deceive me. No way. But many of you are already parading sons and daughters. You say, Call me Pastor. This. Go and sit down. And sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what God has called you to do say in the name of Jesus I believe and yet the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 it says so that day without us that means our generation is still coming the Bible says this do you know before Smith Wigglesworth died I'll share with you some stories today before Smith Wigglesworth died when he was laying hands on Lester Sumro, he told him something. He said, look, make sure you don't die with your anointing. He said, look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them. And then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy. He said, I see a generation. A generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing. Apostle Babalola, CAC. You see, there are many denominations today that don't, do not even believe what their founders live for. Apostle Babalola, he was said, listen, he was said that that guy was so powerful. A time came when he was preaching and he started lifting, literally. See, the water that, the concept of holy water came from him. He was thirsty praying on a mountain and there was no water and he struck the rock and said let water come 
men they are the type you say men to not 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 the, the, the people who are saying men we are, we are called you call us children am i challenging you do you know apostle babalola was moving there was a council now this one i attended a pastor's conference by apostle atb williams in kafanchan emmanuel kure's conference and him, and he was saying this he said that apostle babalola when they wanted to call him when people said there's a gentleman that had the fire of god there were certain elders like seven or eight of them they said they don't believe he's called look at the miracles that this man was doing they said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing in other words this guy is still a joker is playing ministry all of them prayed and a few said actually they have received confirmation the elders refused they say until god speaks to every one of them one by one before they were agreed one day they were praying together and there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street and apostle babalola just came out from the forest he was just moving in the city not going for a program no protocol no mic he was just meandering around the street and that guy came out and people were running yard matches and was driving people and then the elders were watching the lord told them to watch and they were watching through the window and apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him he said but you are not mad now he collected his matches he said, sit down here please that was how those men confirmed that god really called this guy now how do we confirm that god has called a man once you just see a guy that is handsome he looks like Eliab you just say surely surely and see you see ministers and the body of Christ there is no pressure whatsoever on us to press for more you look at a man of God and see that he's absolutely satisfied you even hear some men of God say I'm so fulfilled and he's showing you his watch I'm so fulfilled there are sick people coming there are oppressed people coming and Jesus caused that victory he said because you have deceived me you made me to come all the way you made me to do everything I'm doing and you have been deceiving many like that let me tell you there are many people that God himself would dethrone out of ministry and out of certain places of honor because if we keep deceiving God's people and claiming come for miracle service are the people really receiving miracles or do we just celebrate one miracle a fractured hand got healed when i was watching what the media people played i tell you i i was happy but i was angry at the same time or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired they just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it that's the real me now people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens you say drink it prophetic water you drink it you 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 they say take come and buy a special i saw a man of god praying for one woman the anointing oil is like this 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 uh, uh so, so, uh, this pure tag bottle he poured some on her head told her to pour some Hi. what men of god do to people and ask her to drink everything that's how she drank in my presence it was on, on tv drank everything the man said yes if you drink oil like that you will be sick you will be very sick we spend over 30 minutes trying to minister to one person look at Jesus I will be made clean come on he saw the demons go and they left what is wrong am i is the only me that is having this anger many of you are saying i won't be a man of god please turn and face these people say i believe the word of god the second key your faith can be seen friends the second key I'll share this quickly and we'll pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. 
One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews. So open your eyes. Open your ears. And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes, open your ears, and then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Let me show you, this is one of the biggest secrets of my life. I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight. I tell you, if you believe this, if you believe this, you will be changed forever. Behold, I show you a mystery. Lord, open our eyes. Respect what you are about to hear. <laughs> Verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and what? Blessed him. Number 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of salem which is king of peace three without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god abided a priest continually verse six but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes from abraham and blessed him of all the promises verse 7 read with me together one to go and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better read it one more time and without all contradiction the less is blessed stand up please stand up just stand up pray a prayer in one minute and say lord my life is about to change as i hear this revelation i humble myself let your word come as light please pray this prayer just one minute because god is about to change lives right now god is about to shift levels please pray oh yes doors will open forever for certain people lord i pray i pray this revelation has changed my life it has changed the lives of many i pray that men will be commanders of results hallelujah god bless you please sit down look at this listen to me let me give you certain revelations number one you must realize that in the kingdom of god listen listen to me the anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed of the greater. Abraham is the father of what many people call the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible makes us to understand that the king came, I mean that Abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them. The Bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering and he blessed one man called Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Melchizedek looked at Abraham and blessed abraham and said blessed be abraham possessor of the most high and paul is giving us a revelation here using the life of melchizedek and abraham and he told him he said without contradiction in the realm of the spirit it is only the lesser are you listening to me it's only one who is higher who has the capacity pastor please come who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing follow me in the realm of the spirit listen to me only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you 
and the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing no man can draw you above his anointing are you listening to me that's why when god wanted to swear he looked for one who was higher than him so he could submit to him and say please help me swear to these people when he did not find anybody he said oh, since i'm the only one i swear by myself are you listening to me powerful principle listen listen i want to give you the unbeatable secret the unbeatable secret of the anointing growing in the anointing and financial prosperity when you want to rise you don't sow to people lower than you they can't lift you when you get to your wealthy place this is called charity are you listening to me you sow upwards and then you are called higher are you following me now without contradiction it is only the lesser that receives from the greater hallelujah i want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing i never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that i can do for many of you you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father and many of you have passed anointings that can set you free but because of the stereotype of ministry it has to be me my pastor my father my this and that listen to me and without contradiction the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater When I saw this scripture, I repented from talking about men of God and people. I want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals. Hallelujah. Listen to me. In 2004, I wanted the anointing so badly. I had been seeing the manifestation of God's spirit in my life. And Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me. Honor opens the door of any man's anointing. You will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize i went pastor listen for six hours i was standing in that crusade ground you know what i was doing i was looking for what to do there was nothing to be done later on i saw them pushing people who were sick i said beautiful i said can i join them they say i'm not part of the committee they train them i said committee or no committee I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed full. And I stood there. I said, Lord, I honor this servant of yours. I know that this man is great. I didn't give him any seed. But I honored him in my spirit. I said, Lord, I believe this guy is a career of an anointing. I respect it. I believe it. I covet it. When I stood there, Renard Bonke finished preaching. And they, they prayed for people for salvation. They wanted to pray for baptisms. Then, I had not started praying for people for baptism. And I said, Lord, how can one man pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the Holy Ghost? And I stood. I said, Lord, I believe. And I will never forget. Renard Bonke was going to drink water. Suddenly, I looked up. And for the first time, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium. Was just hovering around the people. You know, his crusades, you stand. Suddenly, I saw it had silvery wings. And the, the Lord just took me to this scripture. Where Elisha told Elijah, if you can see me. If you can see me as I'm taking up suddenly i saw that bed i thought other people were seeing it but i realized that i was the only one who was seeing it 
do you know by the time i finished the encounter with that manifestation of the holy spirit i turned and i found out that i was already back in the stage i don't know when i turned to face and from that day an anointing came upon my life there is no one i pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the holy ghost are you listening to me many of you have cultivated the attitude of dishonoring people i will never forget one time that i went to go and buy was it sugar cane or something and i saw two old women many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor and i saw the old women just 10 or 15 naira i paid for them and they said you know how old women bless they were speaking and i didn't hear what they said but i will never forget one thing one of the women said he said forever you will walk on gold that's what she told me are you listening to me as you see me like these brothers and sisters i am a product of many encounters and many anointings because i realize everything you have not seen in your life you have not known how to receive it whatever it is that you have not seen in your life you have not yet known how to receive it because it's available are you listening to me before charles and francis hunter died when i heard that they died i cried you know why I cried? Because I was planning that I was going to go to the US. And my plan was that I was going to book two weeks with them. Guess what I wanted to go and do? Not to go and preach to them the way many of you want to do. I wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. I wanted to beg them to allow me to scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me it's a law whoever has what you do not have has the ability to impart it upon you whether it's your roommate whether it's your brother listen there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny if you are a barren woman Go and find a woman that has given birth and say madam can i please wash your plate and without controversy the lesser they may not pray for you it's a law that happens automatically are you listening to me see second chronicles second chronicles chapter 9 verse 1 the bible tells us something because of time i may not read it just write it look up please i studied my bible and i saw that this principle was consistent do you remember the Bible talks about Solomon? Pastor, please sit down. Hallelujah. The Bible says Solomon was so blessed. He was so wealthy. Is that correct? When his news got round and the queen of Sheba heard about him, the Bible says the queen of Sheba gathered seeds. What did she do? How will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds? Without controversy, the lesser can bring you into his realm. Cheaply. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says she came and met Solomon. And when she spoke with Solomon, the first thing she did, there's no time. The first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that Solomon was greater than her. Listen, it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you. In this realm, there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you. The ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you. Are you listening to me she acknowledged that truly there was no man like solomon and guess the next thing she did she packaged her gifts and she gave solomon question how do you bless a man who is already blessed are you listening to me because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm that woman heard of the fame of solomon and said ah, ah no no i need to find out what is going on and the bible says she sold and solomon gave her everything she needed that's what the bible says are you listening to me 
if your brother or your sister is not married instead of casting out devils and getting angry go and find a married couple and look at them they just got married and say please um, I bought a small gift to just bless you and without controversy you are fulfilling a law in the spirit suddenly you see yourself walking in the anointing I used to see Benny Hinn I loved him so much I see honor doesn't just mean you package a seed the Bible says honor the Lord with your tithes many of you have been giving your tithes that's why the heavens are not open there is a way you carry it I'm not talking of being sanctimonious that you realize that I'm sowing to someone who is richer than me I'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me and he will take me that's why the Bible says, my God Paul speaking shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish God will send a man who is higher than her and say give him food what is God doing the widow of Zarephath see the Shunammite woman understood this the moment she perceived he was a prophet of God he said quickly let us build a place and without controversy whatever level you want to get to there is a career of that anointing working in this earth the reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class you go to class together but you do not know the difference hallelujah you have been castigating everybody who is married instead of sowing see let me tell you the truth i everybody i see every nice car that i see because i want to buy a car i just say lord thank you for this car if my friend buys a car today i will be the first person to provide fuel for that car i'm not a fool i know this principle are you listening to me you see why we are rich because we provide free bus transport for you i don't know the kinds of anointings that are here and i know that there are some anointings we do not have so we sow into your anointing by providing bus many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing these are the laws are you listening to me every time i'm around a man of god when i went to dr aquamis church to minister it was an honor because he's a father in the land when i entered people were there looking at me oh this is the apostle joshua when i went in front of dr aquami i got down on both of my knees i don't know him he's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines and i greeted him and then i got up because without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater are you listening to me many of you sit down and watch men of god on tv and you say kai this man's realm herself is so bad you have not gotten to where he's getting to you have three members and you are criticizing him there are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing i tell you you can listen to all my tapes the heaven will remain short that honor is a law are you listening to me look at the myriads of nigerians in abuja and lagos queuing for jobs their yard mate goes to a, a lucrative office every day why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him you may not understand what you are doing but you are tapping into a law i tell you it will not take two weeks they will call you are you listening to me respect this principle i'm teaching you for your information let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry i'm sowing into the life of living faith i'm sowing into the life of kenneth copeland i'm sowing into the life of benny hin i'm sowing into the life of reinhard bonke i'm sowing into the life of kobus van rensburg i believe them when i got up i went to south africa i was fasting i was praying i didn't go to show that i'm going abroad i had serious business there he was a career of an anointing others were discussing and criticizing i said lord i know there is grace and i went there smith wigglesworth laid his hands on lester sumro are you listening to me and kobus was with lester sumro for one week and he laid his hands on me when i went there kobus looked at me he said i want to connect you to the lineage of the generals and he laid his hands on me three times sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news it's not by age 
if you understand the principle you will rise are you listening to me listen to me hear me my mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry and this is why i can never fail you don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing are you listening to me i respect the careers of this anointing i saw into the lives of blessed people mike mudok one of my greatest financial mentors i don't like him i don't like him he's a seed seed man but he carries something i'm looking for when he came to koza i couldn't I couldn't make it i was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours for three three hours every day beginning to the end of that program i paid for the internet what i would have paid for my hotel bills and some of you just get up and say how are these people getting the anointing and all kinds of stories hallelujah rather than sell you when you don't celebrate an anointing forget about walking in it I will never allow a man who is greater than me do what I can do for him. I go to a shop to buy something and I see an elderly woman. I, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if I can pay. He mustn't be a pastor. Hallelujah. You want to raise children. You see a woman that raised eight children. All of them are disciplined. There is an anointing. That woman can, you can tap into it. hallelujah i see ministries that represent the things i want even in the realms of prosperity i couldn't understand the prosperity on oedeko's life i studied this man and read his books i couldn't find the key i said lord what kind of thing is this guy i mean what is it i need to see something there and the lord told me one day you are going to sow into his life the day the lord told me i went i went to canaan land hallelujah and i sowed into that anointing i came out to enter the car and the lord told me come out and i came out he said kneel down on that ground i knelt down and i laid my hands and the lord said from today everywhere you go the land will open for you and people keep criticizing we go to cgc is packed full with people we come here packed full blue roof see when you see a man prospering find out what law is being operated it's god that oversees his laws I can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something see before all my brothers entered into a relation when they entered into a relationship i was concerned ask them valentine's day i was so into it many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise my sister is not married what of me don't these guys like me and you see your roommate who may not be as good looking as you look like every time she's cooking where are you carrying this food i'm cooking i want to sow into an anointing you are laughing at her then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you marry and you you see that god you are not fair let me tell you life will never change until you change it for those of you who are waiting for things to change are you listening to me i'm showing you a law without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater hallelujah I spoke to the protocol because we are trusting God for our boss I told them they told me that RCF um, I mean they were charging us a stipend for the boss I said very good because I was looking for a way to sow into their life I'm looking for a boss we are looking for a boss as a ministry what do we do we find a ministry that has what we are looking for and sow into it many people sit in Zaria here they are broke they are poor their ministries are broke but people are running from Abuja, running from everywhere. They come and catch the fire and sow into the anointing. I'm not talking of seed. It's the law of honor. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. If you believe this, go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things. Nothing will change. The Bible says when God saw their faith, faith can be seen. It's hope that cannot be seen. Many people have been doing hope, what they call faith. Sometimes I sit down 
and I'm watching television and I watch Benny Hinn, I watch Kobus, I watch all of these people and I'm kneeling down. We took the leaders, hear me, and all the heads of department because Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching. You will be a wicked person to deny. Hallelujah. Other people were discussing, who are these people said, know this, know that. I told the leaders, Manasseh suggested it and I said quickly, the heads of department and the ministers we went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in abuja it wasn't because we wanted to waste money the lesser is blessed of the greater when we went there listen to me the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walked there the head of protocol went to go and meet them why will you be surprised that we are excellent and without controversy the lesser is blessed I'm showing you a key. I promise you it will open any door. Every time I am in lack, I find those who are prosperous. Quick, quick with the remaining money. I don't waste my time sitting. I don't waste my time. No, no. Listen, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Hi, Lord. In John 21, the Bible says, Peter said, I want to show you something your skill can fail you are you listening to me it was a time of recession i was saying lord give me a word for this recession i've had many preachers and god showed me something do you know peter was a fisherman realize that there was a time jesus told him go and fish and take the mouth from the coin that means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity however there are times it can fail what law do you engage in when it fails let me show you the bible says peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish suddenly there was no fish a fisherman who used to fish all the time there was no fish and the bible says when he went jesus saw them listen to what jesus tells them in john 21 he said children how many people is jesus older than among the disciples he said children it was a test of honor children have you caught any fish they said no he said cast your net that's you have passed the test they would have said children Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening when my mother came here that's why quickly before we said anything i did what i called her i said speak to this work without controversy when it was time for her to go back i packaged a dangerous seed and i went and met her i may be your son but this is not the issue of son now I tapped into that grace quickly. Many of you see careers of anointings that you want. And you just keep looking at them all the time. Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well. He's a leader. He finished serving from Engineering Students Fellowship. And he's very good. Let me tell you a little history about this guy. Are you listening to me? For one year, Mukhtar came and was before he started his business he was dry cleaning my suit for one year one solid year as a seed he knew what he was doing when you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing they are tapping into graces there are many of you you are your job is to grumble and complain there are many people that I honor and so into their lives is not because they are nice people. I look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them. I'm interested in the anointing. When, let me tell you, when I'm watching a man that carries something, I can slap you if you come to, dis, to, to, to disturb me. I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is in church. Before you do say, oh, I'm seen. And you are not getting anything. I give my rapt attention. My spirit is open. I'm saying, Lord, the guy, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes. I'm tired of this joke. Show me this key. And you sit down there. There are times I play messages of Benny Hinn. 
I'm not listening to the message. I just want to saturate under the anointing. And I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. For about one month, that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night. They will play all through the night. I'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake. Do you know that if you honor people, finally, yes, students, we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night. Many of you see the ministers, you just come because they are your colleagues. You just tap them, ah, edgy, how far? I'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's leg, but I tell you the truth. You can sit down and tap into anointings. I never go and see a man that is higher than me empty handed. No matter what happens, even if it is 10 naira, I must put it in my pocket. And at the end of it, I will bless him. Are you listening to me? I want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working. I repented from castigating people and criticizing people. Any grace that I see, I humble myself. I say, Lord, you have empowered these people suddenly sometimes i listen to the tapes once do you know aside from last week's tape there is no koinonia message i don't listen to i can easily say it's my ministry i download it i don't ask the media to bring it i want it to cost me something i download it and every time i'm prophesying or the man of god is prophesying rather i get down on my knees god is my witness i say lord i believe your servant He's about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promised myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that he's carrying. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You're just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you, friends, if you obey this law, there is nothing that will not work for you. Your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working. That's the time for him to go and greet his brother. Go and greet his brother and say, ah, well done, sir. And when they get to filling station, the remaining 4,000 that is left, carry 2,000 inside and say, please get fuel. Insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working. Do you believe this? How many of you are still saying, is that all? Do you believe this? I tell you the truth. See, let me tell you. If I were some of you seated here, I promise you, I will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed. If I wake up in the morning blind, by evening my eyes would have opened. I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I will just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water. I'm blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth and Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time. But I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. Whether it's, even if it's only once you meet them in your life. They may not be men of God. Some of them may not even be born again. Hallelujah. So into the anointings. Every seed that comes into my life, I divide it. And I begin to sow the tithe of this ministry every week, each and every week. We are sowing it. Many of you have been giving, but you have only been doing charity, you have not been rising because you look and say, Ah, God tells you, package this seed, go and sow it into Joshua Selman's life. He said, God for God forbid, I'm seeing suits like me, I'll go and sow. And you see somebody stand with a plate outside. And he's begging you, and you go and throw 20 naira, you'll be rewarded because you did charity. But that wealthy place, you will not enter it. No way, it's not done that way. Are you listening to me? During miracle service, you are standing. Some of you are frowning and just looking. 
these people say why are they always joking call my case instead of you to come and be praying and say lord part of my prayer request there is grace there is grace to receive you can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing go and see what koinonia messages are doing in foot mina go and see the kind the reap the miracles and the revival that is happening in foot mina I, I i wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories i tell you people catching fire but there are some of you who are sitting down here you hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh where i wonder where you think your miracle is coming from when paul was going to damascus and he fell the bible says god commanded ananias in other words he recognized he was a carrier of that glory and ananias said brother paul god sent me that i should lay my hands on you that your eyes be open and that you receive the baptism of the holy ghost and paul said yes i've seen it in a vision and he laid hands on him many of you come in every week you see prosperity you see excellence you feel god is calling you into ministry every time you see every man of god you come and talk and look and say ah jakes i saw you that day at the faculty and suddenly the door is closed you will secretly get his tape and listen to and you find out that the door is not opening you can't find that key are you learning something tonight graduates forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie if i were you and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12 right here as soon as you finish go and find somebody that is walking polish his shoe while you are polishing God is calling you into ministry you prepare or God told you you will marry a minister go and find a pastor William's wife is coming here every week every week you are seeing her after you finish you say ah give me five you just shake her and the door closes and you shake empty hands and somebody can come and say Lord if I may but touch the hell that's how many of you keep sitting here people come from other states less than 30 minutes they have caught fire and caught an anointing are you getting blessed i'm not saying you should give me money i'm blessed you know that and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing say kai that means i'm a big man you are not wise you should turn quickly and start finding a way there is he that scattered and increased there is he that withhold more than his meat and tends to poverty i can't be a failure in life no way not when there is one career of an anointing hallelujah when pastor biodu was going to bring dr miles munro do you know what they did what i mean um um what's his name the mike mudok do you know what they did one month before he came they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs say after me honor as soon as he was entering his hotel room a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote he announced it on air that in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world no ministry has honored him like this the honorarium that they were supposed to give him they doubled it times three and sold it into his life there are people who have been in abuja since 1991 1991 they don't have their building when he came into abuja he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him Many of you are there on campus. God called me into ministry. You are foolishly doing things. There are people who have run this race before you. You can't come and greet them. You see them, you just push them. I taught somebody and they fell down. It will tire you. See, now it's not, it's not like before that they tell somebody, no, no, you see, stay back and let, go, go, go and do ministry. Hallelujah. While on campus, 
we were all already in ministry i tell you we we're men of god but i served in fcs till i finished i was a prayer secretary engineering students fellowship we we're already in ministry doing great things jakes was the president of naka Ejimi was cutie cutie uh, uh, he was in cutie hallelujah manasseh was in faculty of arts he was prayer secretary bishop became the prayer secretary after me right and then he became the president of engineering students fellowship are you listening to me we were ministry but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us from there i became the national prayer secretary of conference of nigerian christian engineering students then we all were serving jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again later became our leaders in fcs and we still told them yes sir we'll go to their father's church and preach and come and say yes sir to them but we're still saying yes sir because it was about office not person are you listening to me so why will you be surprised today that he and i will never lack people who are serving are you listening to me it's a law and it's a principle after tonight's meeting we're going to pray two prayer points the first prayer point is you are going to ask god and say lord i have allowed the careers of my anointing to pass me by without recognizing them from today open my eyes to practice the law of honor i need to begin to work in uncommon results there are careers rise up on your feet somebody's life is changing i tell you somebody's life is changing this is one of the most powerful message you would have had in 2012 and without controversy the lesser i've given you a key tonight i tell you it will unlock any door i don't care what that door is it will unlock every door doors of jobs doors of ministry doors of business doors of power say lord i repent from dishonoring the careers it may be your mother it may be your father it may be somebody by the roadside it may be an elderly woman somewhere an elderly man somewhere it may be your head of department it may be people around look beyond the man see an anointing that can take you to a new level and without controversy the lesser is empowered enriched blessed lifted glorified honored by the greater let this key open a door for you doors of greatness doors of new anointings doors of increase doors of business doors of marriage doors of family doors of jobs hallelujah hallelujah now you are going to pray and you are going to prophesy and say in the name of jesus i honor every career of the anointing that i need in my life you may not meet some of them for the rest of your life but you can honor them and it can be recorded in the spirit it may be your mother it may be a woman that gave birth to a good or a woman that has a good husband you are looking for a good husband you want a new car you want a new job you want promotion you don't get it by dishonor some vessels are on to honor some vessels are on to dishonor if you can recognize this you are a wise man you are a wise woman we're rounding up come on pray somebody 
Lord, I serve with my seed. I serve with my time. I serve with good report. In the name of Jesus. But take a posture. I recognize anointings. I respect anointings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. When you look at a man, you may not know when you see a man who is anointed, find out the encounters that brought that man to that level. Are you listening to me? Find out what level of grace someone may come up the podium or he may preach on TV. He may not have the utterance you are looking for. Find out what brought him on TV that you have not yet gone. Somebody may come up here and may be preaching in Hausa and you are having to, they are having to interpret and you laugh and say, hey, this guy cannot preach. You are there seated at the back. The person is there in front. There must be something he carried. I tell you, if you don't recognize this, you can, see, let me tell you, oh no, it's not something you say, uh, I did it in my heart. Lie, lie. Is a law. Somebody will do it for you too. So you have to honor. Any man, not just a pastor, whoever carries what you don't carry, respect the sacrifice that brought it. And you will see that you are stepping into it. Listen, let me give you a secret. For those of you who are preachers, every time you go to preach in a place and you see someone who is higher than you in the anointing, recognize the grace of God upon that man. The meeting has opened unto you. If you come with arrogance, if I come today and Manasseh is occupying a higher spiritual position than me and I refuse to recognize him, I promise you, you will struggle in that meeting. The heavens will close. I don't care what kind of anointing you carry. These are laws people don't know. No matter who you are, you won't change it. Many of you after now may need to send texts to certain people you have insulted. Careers of your anointing. When they speak, they spit on your face because of how they talk. That's none of your business. You are looking for something. God knows why he didn't put it inside you and put it inside them. Hallelujah. I have a big burden because there are certain kinds of anointings in this house I have not seen in the lives of many people yet. And I know that is because many of you either do not honor it and do not respect it. I'm not talking of lying and rolling on the floor. My greatest, my greatest desire is not to be a superstar Joshua Selman standing i tell you my greatest desire is that every one of you there are many anointings that are for the taking many of you don't know how to receive and let me tell you something the careers of your anointing are not always within your reach every day the price is more every day the price is more a day will come it will cost you more than it's costing you right now i tell you the truth there are many people, for instance, with all humility. I, when I used to have a lot of time, you remember those times? We we'll sit down, sometimes some of the ministers were around. But right now, we don't have that luxury. Every day, it keeps moving further. If you don't see it, a time will come, Elijah will move. You are looking, you will not see the chariot. Someone will come from behind and see the chariot and carry a mantle. Hallelujah. Very soon many generals of god are leaving zaria many of you are the ones who will carry the next fire of revival in your arrogance and pompousness you will never look and say there are anointings what did these people carry that made them shake the campus what did these people carry in the midst of persecution in the midst of pain and say lord would you cause that there be a rain on my life what keys open the door of prosperity what keys open the door of influence? Many of you don't know what is bringing people inside and outside. You are busy castigating and say, hey, crowd does not matter. Instead of you to say, Lord, there is a key. Once upon a time, these people were not there. What brought them? The train is moving. And for those who can see, 
you can catch something and ride on it without controversy the lesser i tell you a secret of commanding results you will command results god put results on earth to be reproduced not to be stood with one man he who has an ear tonight let him hear it 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 let him thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media